covered by any sense that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. And when he was performing these pastimes, they were beautiful, beautiful, and most charming. Anugrahaya Bhakta Nam, Manushin Vehinam Shita, Vajate Tarkashi Krita, Yashupa Tarkparo Vavet. When Krishna appears, he appears and shows his magnificent pastimes. By hearing those, the living entity must become attractive and must perform devotional service. But an amazing thing that happened during Krishna's pastimes. They were somewhat misunderstood by the greater mass of people. Even though they were so darling, so charming, so extraordinary in so many ways, and so much power, opulence, magnificence was there, still the mass of people could not understand that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And during his own pastimes, he did give instructions about bhakti, about the beauty of devotional service, but in Bhagavad Gita, when he gives those instructions, his final instruction was what? Sarva dharma pencha dhamani kamsuna mraja aham tam sarva kape yo mocha shami masha chaha. Krishna gave the instruction, yes, surrender unto me, give up all religiosity, all materially motivated dharma, and surrender unto me. But he did not describe the nature of his beautiful train. He did not describe at that time the speciality of his love with his devotees in Vrindavan. So, Mahaprabhu, he came to reveal the special nature of the love of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. And so when Mahaprabhu came, he came not just by himself. There is a beautiful verse that we say almost every day, Panchatakvapatam Krishnam, Bhakta Rupa Sarupatam, Bhakta Vatam, Bhakta Pyam, Namami Bhakta Shaktitam. Mahaprabhu appeared how? He appeared as his own devotee, and he appeared with his first expansion, Nityananda Prabhu, also in the form of the devotee. He, approached, he came along with his incarnation, Advaita Charya, uh, the incarnation uh, of Mahavishnu, Sadashi and also in the mood of a devotee. And he also came with his uh, bhakti, his uh, Srivast Thakur, also his devotee, and Bhakta Shakti Kaum, the God of Pandit. All of those have a relationship with Krishna. Nityananda Prabhu is Paladev, uh, Advaita Acharya is Tamashiv, uh, Mahavishnu, um, the God of Pandit, is Ramarani herself, and Srivas Thakur, acting as his devotee, is Ramarani. So all of the associates have appeared, and we went to many different places and heard about different associates. They came also to demonstrate this mood of devotion. And Mahaprabhu exhibited himself the most complete and perfect exhibition of what a devotee is. He did not come to reveal himself as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he came to reveal the perfection of devotional expression. When we hear this uh, in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamra, he says, I will come as my own devotee. But he says, He says, whatever a great person does, how many people will follow? So by showing in my own example of love and devotion, I will excite the entire world also to become devotees of Krishna, Radha and Krishna. Because otherwise, these pastimes were completely and totally misunderstood. So, this is the essence and the nature of Mahaprabhu's pastimes. We'll be hearing so much more, but we're all have to speak very little briefly, so I end my speech here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
But navigate is not manifest within Vrindavan. Navigate is very special. Hearing navigate, my poor navigate, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is performing his eightfold uh, Ashtakalya Nila, just like Radha Krishna performing the Ashtakalya Nila in Braj. So Lord Chaitanya is performing Ashtakalya Nila in underneath Mayapur. But no Ashtakalya Nila in Puri, no Ashtakalya in, in Godavari. So the pastimes in the places which we have visited, which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed more than 500 years ago, and which he is still performing with his internal associates. These are the very highest pastimes. So we're so fortunate to go to an entity and to have darshan of these holy places in the direct association of Rabbi Lali Sri Gurudev. These pastimes are also very absorbing. Everybody likes drama. So there were many dramatic pastimes. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he didn't kill gigantic horse demons or bull demons, but still there was drama. As a small child, he was not a good child. He was extremely naughty. Krishna is very mischievous. And Mahaprabhu was delinquent. He was very, very naughty, very restless. He created so much problems. One day, he told his mother that I want to go worship Gandhi. You bring me a, a garland. And his mother said, yes, okay, I'll get one straight away. He said, not straight away, now! And he began to break up the pots. He broke up all the, the spices. He ripped up the bags. He broke the windows. He broke the door. And in the end, he was beating the ground. Man! Mother Shakshi, she didn't say anything at all. Afterwards, she brought the garland. She said, here's your garland, dear. So thank you. And he went off to worship Ganga. Other times, when Keshe Kashmiri came, big, big scholar, Namadhi was full of scholars, they're all trembling. <coughs> oh, if he defeats us, then Namadhi will be uh, vanquished. So they said, oh, you should meet with this youngster. We've got one youngster here, he's most insignificant scholar. You meet with him, then you can meet with the rest of us. So Keshe Kashmiri met with uh, Nimai Pandit. And Pandit, apparently a young, like 15 year old, just discussing Nyaya with his students, easily he defeated Keshe Kashmiri. And then Keshe Kashmiri, he had to understand that actually uh, his beloved goddess Saraswati, who had given him victory everywhere, this was her lord, and he came to surrender. He'd come with so many elephants, so many followers, and he surrendered to Nimai Pandit, and he left alone secretly. He took sannyas and just went away. Uh, there was so much drama. Me, my family created so much problems. And the young girls he was teasing him said, you have to marry me. If you don't marry me, then you'll be married to a man with six other wives. He'll be old, he'll be ugly, and you'll be the youngest wife. He won't pay any attention to you. If you marry me, oh, you'll get a very nice husband, a handsome boy. And they're all complaining to Mother Shachi, just like the gopis used to complain to, uh, complain to Yashoda. He would go down to the river, when the brahmanas were taking baths, sometimes you'd go under the water and pretend to be a crocodile and grab them by the legs. Or when they'd take a bath and they were just ready to off their bags and they'd squirt water over them. And they'd think, oh, now I'm contaminated. But they'd had the good fortune of having Abhishek directly from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this everyone was remembering. And then Nimai, he dried himself very carefully, sprinkled himself with ink, put dust all over himself, and he tell his friends, don't tell my father that I've been here, okay? Then he'd go home the other way. And the Brahmins would complain to, get to uh, Jagannath Mishra. And then Mishra would look at Nimai and say, no, he doesn't look as though he's been down to the river. I think it must have been some mistake. So there were so many, so many pastimes. After, after Visharup disappeared, passed away. Uh, after he left, he took sannyas. So then he might calm down and he became an arrogant scholar. He was so arrogant, so proud. He was the most competent scholar anyway, supernaturally competent. He, he challenged everyone, defeated everybody. When the devotees saw him, they would run. They didn't want to face him because he was just quarreling with logic. One day Srivas Thakur came up to me my and he said, why are you wasting your time? Just arguing logic. Why don't you worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Nimai Pandit was so happy. 
Then later on, Nimai went to Gaya. There he met with Ishra Puripad. Ishra Puripad gave him Diksha. He came back, no longer the arrogant scholar. Bhavuk Maya, uh, Bhavuk Nimai. He became pure devotee, rolling on the ground, where's my Krishna, where's my Krishna? Everyone thought he became diseased. He got a wind disease. Srivast Thakur came to see him. Nimai said, everyone says I got a wind disease. Srivast Thakur said, oh, good disease. I wish I had that disease. This is love. Nimai said, oh, I'm so glad you said that. If you told me I was mad if I had a disease, I think I would have jumped in Ganga. But still, he didn't reveal that he's the Supreme Lord. He used to serve the devotees. He carried their loads for them. He'd do their washing for them. But then, another drama. The Muslims are coming because of the chanting of the Vaishnavas. Srimas Thakur was in so much anxiety. He was worshipping the Shri Dev. And Nimai Pandit thought, now I will reveal that I am the Supreme Lord. He went running to Srimas Thakur's house, beating on the door. Srimas! Srimas! I am the one you are worshipping. Offer your prayers to me. Srimas Thakur came with his whole family. And they began offering prayers to Nimai Pandit. Oh, he's the Supreme Lord. Nimai said, don't worry, I can control everyone. Malini, come here. Malini was a little girl, five years old. He said, look, Malini, chant Krishna's name. So she began, Krishna, and then suddenly she was falling on the floor, rolling, crying, asking Sadhguru Baba, pray. Mahaprabhu said, don't worry, nothing's going to happen. And then he revealed himself to, uh, revealed himself to Advaita Acharya. Then, Nityananda uh, Prabhu came, he heard that finally, oh, his Kanai, he's revealed himself in, in Navadri. He started his pastimes. Nityananda Prabhu came. He forced Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come and find him in Nandanacharya's house. There was a wonderful ecstatic meeting. And then the Sankirtan pastimes came. We were in uh, Shiva Sangha. So they are mad, praying Kirtan, devotees all night. Forgetting themselves, forgetting their bodies, forgetting who they were, just dancing, Hare Nam, Hare Nam. Sometimes Chaitanya was dancing, sometimes his feet would touch his head. Sometimes he was head as a mountain. Sometimes he was like cotton wool. One day they did a beautiful drama. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he played the part of one consort of the Supreme Lord after another. Nobody knew who was taking the parts. In the end, the sun was coming up. The devotees were cursing the sun. How can, the, how can the night end? How can it end? And Mahaprabhu said, come on. And in the form of the consort of the Lord, he breastfed the Lord, uh, breastfed his devotees with prayer. And they were all completely satisfied. And then after this, then, they took the Sankirtan movement out. So after the Mayapur, it's a very, very wonderful pastimes there. Wonderful conclusions. Wonderful, great fortune that we could go there, take darshan in these beautiful places in the association of our Shri Guru Day. Hare Krishna. One check out the people who are talking about Shri Guru Day. One time, I have a real voice for the real world.
अलग कैसा भी हो पाप कैसा हो लेकिन सबका प्राचीन एक ही है नाम
श्री सरस्वती पाल जी बोले काला कली में कलिना इंडिया का एक मार्ग है श्रीमद भक्ति मार्ग है कंटक को की कृपा आहा कर जान की कला की महम करोगी चैतन्य चंद्र जली नाथ की कृपा करोगी और उसके बाद उन्होंने क्या किया बोले ध्येय सदा परिभ्रमण करना अभिष्ट भक्ति के बाधाओं को दूर करके भक्ति का तो अभिष्ट उस अभिष्ट को उन्होंने दोहन किया श्री चैतन्य मनोविष्ठम हमारे श्री नरोत्तम पाजी बोले कि महापुरुष जी का मनोविष्ठ क्या वही भक्ति सुनने से राधा या पन्ना या मार्की दृश्योगा है वह अस्वाद्भुत दिनांक भूत मधुर मार्की दृश्योगा मध्य सौक्षण चास्त्र मधुर भगत भक्ति दृश्यों के लिए बात तब भावार के समझ जाने सच्ची गर्व सिंधु मधुर तो एक राधा रानी के प्रेम की जो प्रकाशना है जो मतलाक महाभारत की चरण सीमा स्तर में भाव उद्गमों राशि मार्गों आयत पराक पर है राजते हलाली सार राधा प्रेम दर्शन उस अभिष्ट को उस प्रेम की प्रकाशना को दोहन की और ये दोहन है स्वभक्ति सिंधु अगर कि चरण चिराग पर नया स्वभक्ति सिंधु ये उस प्रेम का इस सौंदर्य है राधा रानी की प्रेम की प्रकाशना की प्रेम को चरम आस्वादित करके बनाती मंदिरिया बनाती ये उस समुद्र में जब कृष्ण अवगाहन के लिए वो रस के भाग को समुद्र है तो ये जो होती है जो इनकी राधा रानी के जो दास्य जिसको महापुरुष दोहन करके दिए उसको भक्ति सिद्धियाँ वो समुद्र के तट पर खड़े होकर के उस प्रेम को और उछाल देती है कृष्ण के आगे पर उनको रोकती है कि उनसे आपको निर्णय तभी होगा जब उनके प्रति आपको अपना निरीक्षण होना चाहिए समुद्र में स्नान करने के लिए ऐसी दुर्घटना होना चाहिए दिन में दस तरह घूमे कभी चंद्रा के लिए कुंड में कभी परमात्मा सहजा के कुंड में कोई समुद्र में प्रवेश होने का अधिकारी नहीं इस प्रकार उनको बाधा दे करते जहाँ पर कृष्ण अनुनय भी नहीं करते जब दिन का रीस बहुत सा खलु का कुबानी नित्यम परसत पुरसत सिखन का मोदे जस्सा कदार सोदे रिश्ता मान उजायत तक के लिए कुंड भगवान के बाद रिश्ता ये जो प्रेम के जो भक्ति के सौंदर्य था माधुर्य था महापुरुष दो करके हम जैसे कमजोर जीवों को भी पान कराए इसलिए गुरु स्वामी से रामायण का तो पहले ही बोले अगर कोई चरित्र चिराग पर नया वकील न करो समर्थ कोई तो न कुछ बनने सामने तो भक्ति सुनियम हरि प्रकट सुंदर दूते कदम संधि किदा सदा हिंदू एक मेरे स्वर्ती बस सती नंदन और उसमें बोले ब्रह्मा नंदे के बाद पति का भगवत बंधना नंद पत्ता एजिंग गोपन सख्यार अनुपम परवानंद मन में स्वदंते राधा किंग करिवाम मकिर सुख चमत्कार माधु के सीमा तत्पादाम बुझ राजन लक्ष्मण गिर सब ज्योति रे कथिता वे ब्रह्मानंद को जिसया में ज्ञानानंद और भगवान के जीवन में पासना की आनंद है चाहे सब दास वास्ता राधे का सब की प्रसंगता करता है करता है लेकिन मैं इतना ही जानता हूँ कि राधा जी के चरणों में जो तीन क्रियाएं हैं दासियाँ हैं उनके सारे आनंद सारे सुख उनके चरण की नख छटा के किरण की ज्योति में प्राप्त होगा पूरी सेवा में क्या होता है वो अलग बात है ऐसे महापुरुष जो हम लोगों को दिए हम बड़े धन्य हैं कैसे गुरुजनों के अनुगत में इस चीज़ को बड़े सहज रूप में प्राप्त कर रहे कई कामों से जो प्राप्त हो रहा था अलग चीज चरण ऐसे करके अपने बचन को विराम देता हूँ
a stole to the Satishri Shriman, Shiva Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our disciples of succession and all the assembled devotees. Shilagurde has ordered me to speak a few words on the glory of Navadvi, Navadvi Parikrama and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's gift to the world. Sri Prabodhananda Saraswati has written in his Navadvi Satyaka that to wander around the nine islands of Navadvi is the essence of all perfection, the essence of all opulence, the essence of all religious principle, the essence of all bhajan, and the essence of all oceans of sweetness. In that same Nandadvip Satika, we find quoted in our Bodhi Guttikush, Navina Sri Bhakti Nadakanaka Gaura Prati Pratim Navarendya Shreni Navasura Suri Bhata Bhavitam Navina Sri Radha Harimayo Kirtan Haridim Navadvipam Bande to that ever-fresh, ever-new land of Navadvip, where the Lord assumed a beautiful, ever-fresh, golden form and gave a gift that the Lord had never given before. I worshiped that Navadvip, where the already beautiful forest is made all the more beautiful and fragrant by the Ganga River and her gentle breezes, where Sri Sri Radha and Krishna have given an ever-fresh kirtan full of the highest unan ojalaras, the highest mellows of Sri Gauras. I worship that Navadvip, which gives the ever-new taste of Madhurya Ras. Such beautiful prayers by Prabodhananda Saraswati and praying to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, Prabodhananda Saraswati sings, Samsara Dukha Jalado Patita Syakama Krodadi Akramakaraita Vahikritasya Durvasana Nirdita Syamirasrayasya Chaitanya Chandra I am now surrounded by the net. I am enmeshed in the net of material existence. And in the net, at least you can get out of it. You can pull yourself out of the net. But unfortunately, this net is under the ocean of material existence. Maybe I could have still gotten out of it, but my hands are chained behind my back with what? With the wicked material desires. And at the same time, covered and enmeshed in this net, underneath the ocean of material existence, my hands tied behind my back with the chain of wicked desires, I'm being eaten alive by the crocodiles and sharks of lust, anger, greed, pride, illusion, envy, and so many material problems. O oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please give this destitute person who has no other shelter, the uh, merciful shelter of your lotus feet. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a great gift to the world that was not given by any other avatar. He gave Unas Ujjvala Rasam Swabhakti Sriyam. Swabhakti means his own bhakti, the bhakti of Srimati Radhika. But what aspect of that bhakti? Her beauty, her soba. Just like you have a creeper 
and the creeper is wound around the tree. And that creeper has many, many beautiful leaves and flowers and country buds. So that when the air plays with that creeper, the leaves dance and the flowers dance and the munchies dance and they all laugh in great joy. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a gift to the jiva that's the highest pinnacle of devotion beyond which the jiva has nothing further to attain and that is the beautiful service to Srimati Radhika as a maid servant. Srila Gurudev gives another analogy and as the uh, particular kind of sati, who is the maidservant, just as the leaves and flowers and manjuris nourish that creeper and makes the creeper dance and laugh and joy, so the sakis and manjuris nourish, broadcast, and expand the pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Srila Gurudev gives another analogy about a bee. The bee wants to sit on the flower and taste the nectar of the flower. On top of that flower is a manjuri stamen. If it tries to sit on that manjuri bud, it shakes back and forth. So the very beautiful nature of the beauty of the love of Srimati Radhika, that is those maidservants, those fortunate living entities in Manjuri Bhav, they sway back and forth. They have no desire to enjoy separately from, Sri, from separately with Krishna, other than trying to assist Sri Radhika in her service to Krishna. When Krishna wants to enjoy separately with them, they go sway. No, no, I'm not at all interested. Why should I give you a lower pleasure? Your highest pleasure is in accepting the service of Srimati Radhika. Why should I give you something lower? I only want to assist in her service to you. In Srila Gurudev's explanation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's great gift to the world, which hasn't been given before since the last day of Brahma, so many trillions of years before, by that same Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he explained that there are five kinds of sakis. Nichi sati, sati, pran sati, pran kresta sati, priya sati. And of those, nichi sati and pran sati are, have a great inclination towards serving Srimati Radhika. They don't want to serve Krishna independently. They only want to live with Srimati Radhika and in her happiness, they take happiness and in her sadness they feel sadness. If Srimati Radhika is feeling separation from Krishna, they feel that their life is defeated. And if